Hello, Bill Molino here with Bill's History and War Game World, and we have a lawnmower at the Old Stone Fort Complex in Schoharie, New York, and everyone here is just wonderful at the Old Stone Fort. And I've been told I can video, and there is my lovely wife, Lisa, and we're going to go into the Old Stone Fort. So follow me into the adventures. And yes, Scoober the Traveling Bear is around. So the Old Stone Fort has a cool little gift shop with a lot of neat books. And we're just gonna do a quick video. And everyone here is just super friendly and overwhelming with the niceness of a historic site like always. So, let's go here in New York. You have to come and visit the Old Stone Fort. And I know someone will bug me that I didn't get close enough to the muskets. Well, of course, they have the French Charleville. Wooden shoes. I use my wooden shoes quite a bit when it's muddy out. It's neat to see them here in this museum. This museum has a bit of everything and I'm very fortunate to have them be open when we arrived. So if you've seen the movie Drums Along the Mohawk, this old stone fort church was attacked and we're going to show the cannonball that's up in the ceiling later. To my friend Jack Brendel out in Arizona, I hope you're enjoying this, Jack. There is so much for me to... I could probably spend an hour on this video. But uh, there's quite a bit of World War I memorabilia in here. And Robert Ambrose of Fort Frederick, there are several neat kits here. A lot of helmets, there's a French helmet. The leather vest, I think it's called a jerkin, sort of forgot. It's hard to remember everything. They have a lot of neat stuff in this museum. And the staff has been just wonderful. So we're going to head up the stairs and pause our camera because I'll probably make clunky sounds. There is my lovely wife, Lisa, who's uh, on this excursion with me. And look at the artifact cabinets. My goodness gracious. And even more impressive, look at this beautiful ceiling. Now we are, of course, heading to Fort Ticonderoga, but we are spending a little time here. The Arrowhead Collections. So in the world of dinosaurs, it looks like we have several cases of fossils. Now, as you can see, it can spend quite a bit of time here. This is a Spanish cannon from the Philippines. So, I guess I'll pause the camera and go over to some of these display cases. Well, we have some very impressive weapons here. I believe that's a Japanese machine gun. Yes, it is. Very cool. 
We have some Japanese rifles, uh, a German machine gun of World War One, and Spanish American War ammunition belt, the old Craig Jorgensen rifle. Wow, French Foreign Legionnaire rifle. That's quite, quite nifty. Sorry about if I have some glare on this video, on this glass, but it's the best I can do. Just a ton of stuff in this museum. Uh, it's uh, really just uh, amazing how much they have in here. It's just, you could spend several hours just going through each cabinet. Uh-oh, creepy dolls. Why is it that every museum has creepy dolls from the turn of the century? Hey, what little kid wants to sleep with that child? Hey, look at those eyes. Hey, here, here you go. Here's your doll for tonight. Hate to be, uh, you never know what you'll find in a museum. So here's a tourist here. Let's interview our tourist. Uh, what do you think of this museum, ma'am? It's, it's fascinating. It's a lot to see, but also look at that welcome where it says that museum of museum, the way in which they have it set up. It's... A tour of a museum of a museum. Established in 1890, this gallery reflects the cabinet of curiosities. All right. Uh, there's some Native American stone um, display case. I'm going to go and get that video for my friend Dennis McKibben. All right, and of course this video is running much longer than my standard three minutes. Um, Dennis, I hope you'll watch this video. And find it interesting with your Native American history of... Hammer stones. Just uh, endless amount of neat things. I'm letting this video go. If you're getting bored, you can just flip the channel. The Council of War. These are really cool little statues. John Rogers Groups, an example of Victorian sculptures. Roger Groups are extremely popular during the 1865 to 1880 time period. They were never taken serious by critics. It's estimated that between 80,000 and 100,000 of these were produced. And we'll hit this side. And I, I hope uh, whoever is watching this Wow, I believe that's a Morrow War Shields of the Philippines. Something you don't see, a uh, lantern hat. I believe that's a Remington rolling ball. Yes, it is. That is nifty. 
Filipino ambushes and surprise night attacks, curved weapons, and rolling rock, rolling block, bleh, rolling block rifles used at the Siege of Khartoum. Well, if JD from uh, Underground History was here, I don't think he knows I really exist, along with Gary Alderman of the Battlefield Trust, but uh, they do have one heck of a lot of firearms in this museum. These double barrel percussion musket. I'm gonna go and see what the wife needs. Lisa's calling me. So Lisa's saying this one doll has issues. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, so. <laughs> I can see uh, Josh Warliff, my good traveling buddy, went with me to see the CSS News. He still has some younger children in his house. We should see if we can get one of these reproduced in his 3D machine. And again, the museum's roof ceiling is incredible. I'm going to pause the camera. We're going to go back downstairs. I uh, amazed of the uh, of the museum. Well, the World War One, World War Two display is so impressive. I had to, oh my God! It's Goober the traveling bear. He has shown up at the Old Stone Fort in Schoharie, New York. So Chris at BA Travels and everyone else, the Goober Bear approves of this museum and it's a must-see place. Uh, we'll see if maybe we'll even have a picture of Goober the Bear for the calendar this year. So it's quite amazing how he shows up all over the country and even in France. Goober says there's a lot to see out here, so we're going to video a little bit more and then we'll be closing out our video. Well, I'm outside of the fort and I'm going to go around and get a video of the cannonball on the reverse side. I'm going to let this run. I have a lawnmower running. Hopefully, it won't be too loud and I am carrying Goober the Traveling Bear, believe it or not, <laughs> but there's no one here, so the cemetery here is incredible. Um, Rich Allen, who's a big ghost hunter, I wouldn't be surprised if you get some orbs out here. Quite amazing. It's uh, I bet you could spend pretty much a full day with all that's here to see at the old stone fort. There is a, a little village that we're gonna go visit next that's right across the street. So The cannonball hole made when the fort was attacked by the British Tories and Indians under Sir Johnson and the Indian Chief Joseph Brandt in the raid of 1780. And there's the hole. Now, we're going to go in and get a picture video of the cannonball. Whereas, like, the mortars out there are hollow. Okay. And you would put shrapnel or gunpowder in them. Whereas this is solid and can do a great deal of damage to a ship or a building. Uh, we have the cannonball. Well, thank you very much. And you've been so kind. And what's your name here? My name is Linda. Well, Miss Linda, thank you for letting me video your wonderful museum and uh, putting up with Goober the Traveling Bear. I know you think <laughs> I'm crazy for that. Well, maybe just a little. We're going to go across the street and check on the village. Thank you. All right, so our old stone fort has a lot here to offer. Besides the fort, the two levels of museums, cemeteries everywhere. 
within it. We also have this little village. It's quite nifty. And I don't have a gimbal to keep the phone, cell phone from flopping around, but we're doing what we can do with it. And I'm letting it run um, just because I know I do have a few followers that will never make it here. And they enjoy seeing these historic sites in this rough video format. If you want to see videos that are well, well made and edited, go to JD and his Underground History Traveler or Chris at VA Travels. And I really enjoy Chris's VA Travels videos. So this is the little red schoolhouse. And wow, we can't get in, but it has a big church bell on the top. There's my, my lovely wife, Lisa. And we even have a couple buildings that could be attacked in a good French Indian War raid. And this is the field that they do have their Revolutionary War reenactment in. So, um, I'm going to pause the video and uh, All right, I'm gonna close out this video. The Old Stone Fort, Goober Approved, The Traveling Bear, uh, Schoharie, New York, probably two hours from Fort Ty, 45 minutes from Albany. Um, stay safe, be kind, be courteous, and come out and visit the Old Stone Fort. Thank you.